our time is fast spent, but I want to share today's uh, teaching and finish all of it. I understand you've learned quite a lot during your, your discussions, but I will ask that you don't get caught up in, uh, in the chewing. Is it chewing or leaking of sweets? But you listen to the word, even my beloved wapigi. Munaitwanga wapigi ama? Amen. Okay. Please don't disconnect me again. Ama amtaki ni ubiri leo. I've left my Bible behind there, so someone help me with it so we can go and study the Word of God together. Mabeba bibilia kama mchungaji mwenyewe. Amen. Our Bibles, our notebooks, and our pens so we can uh, study the Word of God. Today we want to speak concerning giving for charitable activities. Concerning giving for charitable activities. How many of us have ever been in any charitable activity? Nani ajapata suiti? Apewe, apewe. Kila mtu apewe. Amen. Today I want us to speak concerning giving for the sake of charitable activities. How many of us have ever been involved in any charitable activity or you've gone outside? Usually those things are called outreaches. How many of us have ever gone for outreach? Now let me see the people that we were with in 2021. Oh, Munakumbuka. Okay. Now, today I want us to speak concerning uh, charitable activities, giving for charitable activities. Jesus actually teaches this and he says it's important. You've seen it even in your class while you were studying that it is important. And so I'm going to emphasize the same even as we continue to study. And straight away we'll start in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. And uh, I want you to go back and read from verse 31 for you to understand the context. What he's saying, he was like, there are many people of you that live like murderers and yet you are humans. He's saying, when you are taught of me, then you will be accepted of me. When you are taught of him, then it means you come to believe him from the point of who he is. Now, when you go forward in verse 40, of course he tells them, let me start from verse 37, then the righteous will answer him, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 40, uh, 37. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? In your discussion, you spoke something about strangers. Eh? When did we see you as a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And listen to verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Many people want to give God things, but no one wants to share with a neighbor. So people are waiting. They are like, Mimi ni kona zawadi, nataka ni mpe mungu. Na ni zawadi gani labda ukona maindi. Lakini mwenzako ana, unangoja mungu waonekane ndo wakule maindi yako. 
It cannot work like that. Verse 40 has said, The king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So what do we see? What we see here is, God is not going to stand and then he takes what you have to give. But as you consider God as the one dwelling in the inside of that, your brethren, then when you offer a hand of help, you are doing that to God. So he says, in as much as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. What are the things that he's speaking about giving? Food, drink, cloth, daily basic needs. So Jesus emphasized the kind of giving which goes a long way to cater for the needs of others. And not in verse 40, he says, the least of these, my brethren. When he's speaking about that, he's speaking about brethren. So it means it is important to consider brethren. And that is why things Christ, things church, understand them in the context of the church and the body of Christ. Many people have made mistakes and made blunders because they are running so far away in the world to make manifest the realities of God. It doesn't work like that. The realities of God are made manifest from within us as the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we continue to understand giving for charitable activities, it's also important to know that primarily giving in the kind of food, drink, water, and all of those other things were not primarily used to reach to those that are not saved. Because even non-believers are able to do that. Something happened in North Africa. And right now the organizations that are spearheading relief provision are not believers. But they have the money and they are doing it. So it means the believer ought to have something greater to give when everyone else is able to give those other things. Yet, because we do not have, want our brothers, our sisters to be held at ransom because of the things that others give them, that the world can give, then it is our responsibility as the church to cater for those small things. That is why you cannot let a brother go and beg from an unbeliever when a believer is able to provide. Because those are the things that the non-believers boast about. Because that is what they boast about. So for us, we purpose that we do these things amongst us so the world has nothing against us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is important, saints, to note that charitable activities, the giving of food, the giving of, of whatever it is that people do give, it wasn't a means to reach the unsaved. Rather, it was a means to refresh the ones that are already feeding. Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, I want us to rush because I don't want us to leave this unfinished. 15, let's start from verse uh, from verse 32. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 32. Jesus says, now Jesus called his disciples, scripture says, now Jesus called his disciples and said, he called them to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. I want you to be a good student and see that these were students that even with hunger for three days, they were still continuing to Cheer from of Christ. So, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. Some of you can leave now and go because you are hungry and it is lunch time. Some of you can refuse to come for fellowship on a certain day because you had not yet had breakfast. Breakfast delayed, especially those of you who do not prepare for yourself. Aki, while you prepare breakfast late, 
Ndiyo kwa mana nilichelewa. Ama ndiyo kwa mana siku kuja. These people three days hungry but they were there. Say I am that person. Thank you Elvis for saying it with a smile. So these people Jesus had compassion on them because they had continued with him three days. They had nothing to eat. He says, and I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Imagine, these people were not sending themselves away. They were continuing. Jesus saw, okay, now the conference has ended, but these people are still here. If I tell them go, they will go. But because they are hungry, they will faint. So these people, three days hungry, but they are still continuing. Then Jesus says, I do not want to send them away hungry, Meaning, hawange complain, wangeenda tu lakini wengi wao wange kufia kwa wapi? Njiani. Yet they were ready, their desire was that they feed. Yet the feeder understands a certain principle. He says they will faint and the realities they will have had in them will not be brought to manifestation. Because they have learned, but they are fainting and maybe dying because of hunger. So what does he say? Verse 33. Then his disciples said to him, Where could we get bread enough in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Next verse. Let's go all the way up to verse 30. I wish we could go up to verse 39. Okay. Let's, uh, verse 35. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitude. Verse 39. And he sent away the multitude, got into the boat and came to the region of Magdala. I want you to see in verse 32 he starts by saying they have continued with me three days, they are hungry. Food is for them that are feeding, not to call people to feed. Are we together? I am using food. When I speak of feeding, I am talking about the word. Food is for the ones that are feeding, not to bring people to feed. Meaning, if you are doing charitable activities because you think it will attract people to the gospel or to Christ, Unless you've preached the gospel, you are wasting resources. There are many people among us who need those resources. Spend the resources on them. Some of you might even have plans that after service here, there is a charitable activity you're going to join. It is okay. But it doesn't win people to Christ unless you have preached to them the gospel. He says in verse 32, I do not want to send them away. They were still continuing. Had Jesus not said, I release you, they will still continue. Hungry, but feeding. A full stomach is not a guarantee that someone will feed. But as a person who has been filled with the word of God, don't leave that person hungry. Don't leave that person on an empty stomach. Yet, a, a full stomach is not a guarantee that someone will feed on the word. Are we together? So Jesus is not calling to say, okay, bring more food so that we can go even to those other ones who didn't come into the wilderness. No, he's saying, I want food for these ones. They were 4,000 men. Women and children uncounted. And you know how men used to behave those days. So you can imagine how many people were there. If we can say a quarter of those people were married, or, three or uh, a third, then it means there were 1,000 more women. If every family had one child and they came with them, those are 1,000 children plus 4,000, that is 6,000. Just bare minimum. Jesus is saying, I want this to feed before they go. 
when you think of giving, when you think of doing charity, before you go, hey, I want to go to the street and then today we have come to my... There are some people in this congregation that need that 1,000 that you want to go and spread out there. Give it there. Give it to those people. Of course there is order. We are going to see order as we continue. Praise the Lord. These people were tired but they kept on. They had nothing to eat but they were basking in the word. I've told you and I'll say it again. A full stomach is not a guarantee that someone will feed on the word. Of course in, in Corinthians Paul later says when you come to fellowship come when you, everyone is, has eaten in their homes so you do not become a disturbance when you gather. But anyway. Hmm. So then what does the word teach concerning giving to the poor? Or helping the helpless. Primarily, and you can write this down, primarily the New Testament teaching concerning giving to the poor refers to the poor saints amongst us. It is the responsibility of the government to organize economic poverty alleviation programs kwa wanainchi. It's not the responsibility of the church. It is the responsibility of the church to cater for the well-being of the church members. But it is the responsibility of the government to cater for the poverty alleviation of the wanainchi. So when the New Testament is speaking concerning giving to the poor, it refers to giving to the poor saints amongst us. Let me give you an example in the book of Acts chapter 2. This you have seen in your discussions. Acts chapter 2. In advance, I'll ask for a few minutes of your time so we can finish this. Is it helpful? Okay. In the book of Acts chapter uh, 2, and let's start from verse 44. Verse 44, Acts chapter 2. It says, now all who believed, how were they? How were all who believed? They were together and had all things in common. And had all things in? Of course, the world advances and so society changes. There are some things that you may not exclusively live the way they lived. But I want you to look at the person next to you and then you answer yourself if you know where they stay. Had all things in common. When we naonana tu wakati tumefika hapa. These people, the example of the discipline of the church is that they had all things in common. 45. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Scripture is saying in verse 44 that this was exclusive to those who believed. So the division of possession was among them who believed, not including the non-believers. Do you realize that the time when we have something good, that is the time good according to what the minds of men think. That is the time we think to send invitations to people. Come. We have a guest preacher we have this one come because we have a gift. When we have someone coming to share the word, that is a gift to us. But we do not even remind each other, come, you remember the, this teaching session that is going to happen? We do not remind each other. What we do, please go and do invites to others. Go and do invites to others. When did you last remind your friend? Sunday is coming. Now you unajua ni mshirika, ni mwenyeji hapa. Lakini, because unajua ye ni mwenyeji, ah, hata jishugulikia. Hata jipanga, hata niendee wale wengine. If you are not able to share the good news with that friend of yours, you won't be effective in sharing with anyone out there. Charity begins where? From within. Anaiswa, sasa kuna wenye wana niangalia vibaya, mwalimu. 
Holy. Praise the Lord. So, this is exclusive to those who believed. Had things in common. Praise the Lord. So they shared locally amongst others. Let me give you something. If you have anything that you feel you desire to give, please bring it here and then we shall distribute as anyone has need. Because amongst you are people that may be in need of that beautiful shoe that you think you do not count beautiful anymore. Amongst us are people that may make good use of many things that you have. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, let me instruct the ushering department or the welfare department. Prepare a corner somewhere where every fellowship, day, if you have anything to give, whatever it is, you come and drop it there. We shall be faithful with your giving and we shall distribute equally. We want us to grow in the discipline of giving to each other for the sake of each other. Praise the Lord. So that we are not coming here and we are feeding on the word, but in the inside of us, there are many things that a brother could be of help in. Praise the Lord. So they divided, sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So there must be, there is need and then it is met because a believer or a brother or a sister cares. That is the discipline that I want us to have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was with uh, the, the, this family that sat this way in your night. Praise the Lord. Yo, nimekuwa hapo na tulikuwa tunajifunza kutoka mitume. Ina, inasema mitume. Acts kwa Kiswahili. Matendo ya mitume. <laughs> 11.27, let's open there. Acts 11.27. Acts 11.27. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Pay in attention here. Next verse. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the... Throughout all the... I want you to be to pay attention throughout all day. So where was the famine going to be? In all the world, right? Same way, if there is going to be a famine in all of Wasin Gishu, I'm not saying I'm prophesying, I'm giving an example. Kwamfano. There is lack or oh, let me just give you this. You remember when there was a fuel crisis? You remember when there was a fuel crisis? Okay, now keep that and then we finish here. And one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Verse 29. What is the issue at hand? Famine throughout the whole. Famine throughout the whole. The world is where we find believers and non-believers in the world as in the earth. They are believers and they are none. Okay. Then the disciples, this is the reaction of the believers to the understanding that there is going to be a famine in the whole world. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, Determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. The issue is to the whole world, but the believers are selective in where they send relief. To the brethren. Now let me take you back to the example of the fuel crisis. At one point, I was woken up at 3 a.m. to go and get fuel. Mwenye aliniita angeweza kuita watu wengine pia. Lakini he looked for the brother first. There are some of you when you have interesting activities we never hear from you. You 
you prepare your birthday parties, we are not there. You prepare interesting things, you have opportunities, job opportunities, and there are many people in, in the body of Christ, your, ve your local assembly, they are looking for employment opportunities you never share. And then later on you say, ah, mungu wa watu wafanyi. It's because God is giving you opportunity to be a blessing to people and on, you're not using that opportunity to be a blessing to people. And then you say, God alituambia tukue charitable. Sasa mi nimeenda huko enje na nimekuwa na nyumbani mwako mnateseka. So this brother called me at night. And I drove. When I reached that place, it was, there were not many people. Now, this is someone who has friends that have motorbikes, that have cars. Siange wapigia simu waende. But he knew, first of all, to the brethren, let the brethren not struggle. How do churches grow? Churches grow because the brethren in there do not struggle. How do the brethren come out of struggle? Because everyone lifts another person's hand. So when you are there, you lift another one. When another one is there, they lift another one. That is how church grows. So when, stri when crisis strikes, it is not primarily the believer's responsibility to cater for the world. But it is the believer's responsibility to cater for their fellow believers that are in need. Man, why I say you want to go today, you will stay until service ends. But it is the believer's responsibility to cater for their fellow believers that are in need. It is the believer's responsibility. Not for the world, but for them. Amen? So when there was going to be an issue in Judea, the believers did not say, okay, how many people dwell in Judea? One million. Okay. Now, how do we as the church cater for one million? No. How many believers do we have? How many brethren do we have in Judea? 20,000. Okay. How do we cater for the 20,000? The 988,000. Mm -mm. The 980,000. We do not know. How is your neighbor? That is a question I'm posing to every one of us. How is your neighbor? Do you know how many people we would help if we grew this in us? That we are able to give for the sake of others? Just like that. Amen? This is what Jesus said in three accounts. The same message of Jesus, but in three accounts. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 11. 26, 11. Matthew. Jesus said, for you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. Of course, there were people that were complaining, eh? When this so-called prostitute came and then poured oil. And then they were grumbling. Why? Why did he? Why is he wasting? And these were his own disciples. Why is he wasting this oil? You know, he would have... Kuna wapangi, wana, wana jua kupanga. You know this, we would have done it like this. And then it does this. And then it does this. Jesus says, the poor you have with you amongst you always. I'm not saying you are poor. The fact of the matter is, there are people that might be in need at some point amongst you. He said the same. Mark records the same in Mark 14, 7. And John records the same in John 12, 8. The same. The poor you have with you always. Now, because there might be amongst us, 
someone maybe today has no lunch. Someone maybe doesn't know how they are going to to cater for their rent for this coming month. Remember where we were in verse 45, Act 2, that they brought, they distributed as each one has need. Challenge is many times we don't even know if there is need. But it is because the church has also not been instructed. Now I know we've been instructed. We shall speak out and we shall be willing to give to cater for those things. In the book of Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Let's start from verse 9. And let us not grow. Let's read this together. 3 to 1 we read. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Why? For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, the challenge is, Many believers think they don't have opportunity. They only think they have opportunity when the opportunity is. Now I am reporting live from this place because there is a group that has come and they have come to cater for the people that are without help. Those are the opportunities that many people are looking for. He is not speaking about an opportunity ya kuonekana kwa TV. An opportunity is that you are near someone, a brother who is in need. That is the opportunity for you to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. So therefore, as we have opportunity, what is the opportunity? The poor you will have with you always. That is your opportunity. So therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Underline that word all if that Bible is yours. Let's do good to all especially now if that Bible is yours. Circle that word especially to those who are of the household of faith. The key word I want you to take here is especially. That word especially is the Greek D-malista. D-malista. D-E space M-A-L-I-S-T-A means but most of all. It also means but above all. It also means but chiefly. It also means moreover above all. So as you are thinking, am I saying you won't help someone who you do not know? Yes, you will. But chiefly above all most of all where should you do good to all to those who are of the household of faith that is why we tell you eleweka because we are instructed to do good to especially those who are of the household of i don't pay fees for given because he's not of my household. But I pay fees for this young lady. Because she is of my household. Now I am speaking in terms of men. Is it good to pay for given's fees? Yes. Is it my responsibility? No. Is it good to pay for Sancha's fees? Yes. Do I sometimes lack? Yes. Is it my responsibility? Yes. So what do I do? Nikose nisikose lazima fee ifanye nini? Ilipwe. Kwa sababu gani? It is my responsibility. Because she is of my household. Now if you are of the household of Iwami Ministries, it is the responsibility of every member of Iwami Ministries. You can't sleep hungry. When there is a brother in the ministry who has an extra kilo of unga. You can't sleep hungry when there is a brother. But I've seen them. Many times they are just walking. You know. And then, pastor, because you are. Okay. Kula nyuma. 
ndo tumewacha especially to those who are of the household of faith are we stingy no we are just disciplined bwana yesu asifiwe so if if you are not anywhere it becomes hard for any brother to help you kwa sababu haueleweki haujulikani are we together it is the responsibility of all of you to cater for all of you because you belong where together amen so that word especially i've told you it means but most of all above all but chiefly moreover especially so the focus of us as the church should always be on those of the household of faith who are those of the household of faith primarily the local assembly praise the lord so always every sunday do a certain charitable activity watch everyone eh hey, i have realized brother martin every sunday i see him with one pair of shoes every sunday every sunday one sunday figure out what is his shoe size one sunday come with another pair say brother that is how we build especially to those who are of the household of ah this brother loves suits but every sunday he's in that one suit but now a suit is 5000 i am not able to raise 5000 let me go and speak to another sister or a brother we would like to make available a suit for this brother but i have only 2000 are you able to raise another 3000 you bless a brother with a suit but you know people are so quick to go out there kwa sababu gani watani on indeed the world will see you but you're not living as a believer that is helpful to the body of christ when i was ifiwe So the focus is always on those of the household of faith. In the book of Romans chapter 15 we see that this was the same understanding even with those that were in Macedonia. Romans chapter 15 uh, let's read from verse uh, eh? Okay, let's start from verse 20. Romans 15 Okay, let's start from 25. Romans 15:25 he says, "But now this is Paul, but now I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the to minister to the Okay, 26. What was this ministry? For it pleased those in from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem were they the only poor there were many other poor people in Jerusalem many of whom were not believers but the macedonian church is specific let us cater for the poor among the saints i don't understand you if you are so quick to be of help to people out there and you leave your own struggling imagine sasa nisimame hapa niseme given until you finish primary tuition covered then kesho yake sancha arudishwe home atisijalipa alafu niseme ni sawa acha tungoje next year utaenda lakini given anafanya nini anasoma that is foolishness it is foolishness Now I want you to translate that analogy I've just given you to your local church. Praise the Lord. Many of you are gifted in many things. The only time you use your giftings is when you're out there. Uh, here we never see your smile. We never see that beautiful dance. Let minister so and so come to a certain place. We shall see a dance we've never seen from you. 
it is foolishness it is not that you don't have money you do how do you give you go home and watch tv and then someone will say you know now god has told me this and this and this and this and this send 1000 how you get 1000 we don't know it is foolishness for the poor among the saints who are in jerusalem it is okay for you to have 1000 and send who are you you lack this 1000 is for the poor at iwami ministries because that is where you belong. Discipline will make the ministry and the church and even you as an individual grow and be better. So Paul is saying he was going to minister to them and what was he going to minister? He was going to minister the contribution that the Macedonian church had sent him to go with. Amen. So that also applies to when we give. Of course, later on we are going to give. When we give, part of the purpose for the giving, even when we put for you the number here, we give you the envelope, we say contribute for this, we say give for this, is that the needs of some of us amongst the ministry, them that I need, may be met. If you realize we do not say, okay, now there is a basket for this, there is a basket for this. We want you to be disciplined enough that you, you watch and say, okay, there is need here. Let me, let me work on it. Work on this. Work on this. Work on this. So that as you have opportunity, then you are able to give. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, in verse 1, Paul says, that now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. Verse 2. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. This one was for the saints. Back to verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the? Many times the only time you want to collect is when you're going to cater for those that don't even know you. Collection for the? I'm going to finish very soon. So the primary focus of us as the church should be the well-being of the saints amongst us. Those of you that have spent quite some time with me, you can attest to this that I've told you, I want to be with everyone who prospers even as they prosper in the word. Praise the Lord. Because I understand that our primary focus should be on the well-being of the saints amongst us. And Paul was a good example of this one. Manu, are you going to revenge? It is well. I'm almost done. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. We shall start from verse. From verse 32. Acts chapter 20. From verse 32. We read all the way to 35 quickly. So now brethren I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. And give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Are we saying that because it is our responsibility to cater for another, so we covet? And so because I have not received from someone, then I'm one of the buyer. You know, it is for the brethren. Paul is saying, I did not covet. That is why it is important that we all learn to be willing. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. Paul is saying, I have not coveted anyone's thing, but these hands have provided for my necessities and for the necessities of those who were with me. The key word here is Paul is saying, I did not covet, I did not 
provide for everyone. But my emphasis was that I make provision for those who are with me. Who is with you? Your hands make provision for them as well. So he's saying, for those who were with me. It is very important. Of course, in verse 35, he says, I have shown you in every way. So he did those things as an example that by laboring like this that you must support the weak. So it is your responsibility to lift the hand of another, especially those of the household of faith. Now there is something that you handled before you finished your class in Hebrews chapter 13. I'll, be, I'll have done a disservice if I don't handle it so we can finish. Hebrews 13 from verse 1. Hebrews 13 from verse 1. The question you were asked was that who are the strangers that were mentioned there? Verse 1 says, let brotherly love continue. Understand the text, you must, for you to understand the text, you must understand the pretext first and then the pre post text because it gives you then context. So it says, let brotherly love continue. Next verse. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. In verse 1 he has said, brotherly love among the brethren. He says, continue. It is not something you do as an event. Like how you say, okay, on Monday we are going to Kisumundogo to do charity. That is an event. He says, let brotherly love continue. This kind that we are speaking about, it is our lifestyle. That is why I've said, every time you come to service, bless someone. Amen, amen. Do I still have you or I've lost you already? Okay. So it is our lifestyle. And because it is our lifestyle, it should not make news. It should not make... I want to do charity activities and the first thing that goes there, camera. Wanabari, you know, come cover our event. We are going to. It is okay, but if in among us you there are struggles, then it is not okay. It is just foolishness. Remember, I'm not abusing. I am explaining. Verse two, he has said, "Do not forget to entertain strangers." That word, strangers, is the Greek word philonexia. Philonexia, p. H I L O N E X I A. Philonexia. Which actually explains hospitality. Be hospitable to another person. And that word is from the Greek again, philoxenos. 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 P H I L O X E N O S which explains being generous to guests. None of you knew me. So when we first met, I was a stranger, but you entertained me, and we are here now. Molly, when you first came inside, I didn't know you. I entertained you by asking you who you were, and you told me, now you are no longer a stranger, but you were. So I entertained you, and now that you are a part of the family, it is our collective responsibility. So these strangers is not, he's not telling you to go and start looking for, but he's saying when they come to you, they may not be necessarily biologically related to you. How many of us are related by blood here? And yet we have entertained each other. So it is a good display. It is a very good display. As I finish, many times people might want to do charitable activities and yet those charitable activities only please men. 
And let me tell you, that is a trap that has been set for the church for many generations. Many, many people are so much taken in the thing of charitable activities that they have now forgotten the gospel. Those things take money. Now when any people have money, they forget the gospel because we can go and then give this amount to these people. We can engage ourselves in this. Learn the word. Cater for those amongst you and you will be productive even in terms giving for charity. I'll give you homework in first James, ah, not first James, James chapter 1 verse 27 and James chapter 2 from verse 15 and 16. You'll go and study that. Galatians chapter 1, no, Galatians chapter 1. In verse 10 he says, for do I now persuade men, O God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a born servant of Christ. I would not be a born servant of Christ. There are many times you want to do those things because people might like you because of them. The only thing that you will win is what is called a false conversion. Men will be attracted to them because who doesn't want food? Who doesn't want beautiful clothes? So you will only entertain false conversions. But if you meet them with the word, so that even when they are hungry but they have received the word but die, then you can see about their food. Matthew 25, you remember? Lastly, lastly, very lastly, actually this one let's be on our feet as I read it so that I am not, I am not inspired to continue. 1 Corinthians 2. He says, let's be on our feet. And I, brethren, when I came to you, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1, and I, brethren, when I came to you, he's saying, when I first met you for the first time, you were not believers. This is the blueprint for meeting for meeting people who do not know Christ for the first time. You do not carry food with you. You do not carry clothes with you. You do not carry new shoes. Bring those new shoes to the fellow believers. They need them. So Paul is saying, and I, brethren, when I came to you first time when you did not know Christ, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, the wisdom of men, declaring to you the testimony of God. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is how we should meet people that we have, we want to bring Christ to. Not with handouts. Bring those handouts to fellow believers. They need them. Verse 3. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech, verse 4, and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. You know, how talala jatena, kuja, kuna mchele, kuna chaku. It was not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but with in demonstration of the spirit and of power, not in falling. Demonstration of the spirit is in what the spirit teaches. So go to them with the word, with the gospel. Verse 5, and we shall end here. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. What is the wisdom of men? Men wake up in the morning to kushugulikia tumbo. Your faith should not be hapa kwa tumbo. Your faith should be in the power of God. That is why if there is anything, share it with those amongst you. Have we been blessed? How many of us have been blessed? That is how we do giving for charitable activity. 
activities. Now let us give. And we give because we are blessed. We give because our giving goes a long way to facilitate the work of ministry and to even cater for the work of ministry. You can give via M-Pesa. The number should be on your screen in a little while. You can give via M-Pesa. The number is 0114970840. But if you do not want to give via M-Pesa, you can give in cash. Receive an envelope and keep put your giving there. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the giving of the saints. They give because they are blessed and as they give, they are catered for in all that they might have ever needed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen.